welcome to my mompreneur studio. I'm Anissa Crespo, and on this episode of She Swaps, I am talking to Rhonda Bullish Lampo, and she's a speaker, a wellness and wealth coach, and a published author. Welcome, Rhonda. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us um, your journey into all of these wonderful ventures that you're into and uh, how you got to writing your book. Well, I will give you the 30,000 foot overview because obviously <laughs> there's a lot of details to this, but I've been a wellness and wealth and lifestyle coach for probably about a, a little over 20 years. I focused then on the health aspect. And then um, in 2015, my husband was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And um, we had about four months to prepare and he went in for his first surgery and came, came home just a few days later after his first surgery of which we learned he lost his facial nerve and they took a nerve out of his foot and super glued it to his brain stem. And, um, and he came home. So, you know, we were on the six week recovery mode. And then just 10 days later, he was complaining of a headache, headache, an extreme headache. And we went back to the emergency room to discover that he had um, to have a second emergency brain surgery. And it was um, due to bacterial meningitis in the brain, oh uh, hydrocephalus and ventriculitis. So, I call it the trifecta, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. The, the trifecta of super contagious, nasty stuff that you don't want to get. And he was given a 2% chance of surviving. Wow. So yeah, a two, because people are like 2%. I'm like, yep, 2%. And so um, he obviously, he survived. I survived. I always like to say that because I survived it as well. Yes, you did. And, and after spending about 32 days in a coma, he came out of it. And he always says, it's, you know, Hollywood doesn't treat coming out of a coma correctly. You know, just open your eyes and bling, there you are. And it's like, no, doesn't you work have to, that way, does it? no, you have to reorient yourself to where you are, what's going on in the world. And then um, we had to venture down the road of getting him rehabbed. So he had to relearn how to walk and drink and eat correctly. And so he had a speech, occupational and physical therapist. And so it was a long road. It was about six months of high intensity um, care. And then took about a year before he was able to get back to work. Uh, I shouldn't say get back to work, drive into work, work eight hours and come home. So over the course of after the first six months, he spent some time, you know, at home working half days and, and, you know, doing a couple hours here and there. And so that's what spawned my book, obviously. Um, there were lots of little God winks. That's what I call them. God winks, little mini miracles that happened because he wasn't supposed to survive, let alone thrive. So he still works. He's, he works a 40 hour a week, which most, most people are amazed with. And so that's why I call it God winks and miracles happen because it was an absolute miracle. Um, other people who his surgical team, who they had tried this method with before did not survive it as well as Steve did. The nerve didn't regenerate like it did with Steve. So if you saw him on the street today, you would not recognize we would not even notice or even think that he had gone through everything he's gone through. So wow. I wrote the book um, at the encouragement of a family friend. He's, he's like, you've got to write a book. And I'm, I have lots of friends who've written books, a lot of friends. And I'm like, I'm not interested in writing a book. And his if anything was his name was Steve too. And I'm not interested in writing a book. And he's like, you've got to, because Steve wasn't supposed to make this, make it through, and you've got to share your story. So that's what I did is I put together basically the book before, during, and after in more detail. One, so that I can remember some of the details, because as years go by, you kind of forget a few things. And two, so that people who 
were kind of hanging out, you know, kind of watching what was going on on Facebook. And if they wanted to know all the details, they could get the details um, through my book. And I always say it's a nice fireside or a beachside or poolside read. It's very, very easy read. And then, but most people are, are very surprised by our story and how, how he made it and how, and what our life looks like now compared to before. Yeah, that is just absolutely incredible. Tell us one more time. What's the name of the book? It's called God Winks and Miracles Happen. God Winks and Miracles Happen. I just love that. And yeah, that is truly a miracle and remarkable. I mean, you don't, I mean, if a doctor gives you 2%, I mean, you're pretty much banking on, okay. Right. That's, that's pretty scary. So I imagine you were in the midst of preparing for all these things that actually didn't uh, come to fruition. Well, I, I learned a lot on the fly because you learn a lot about the healthcare system. You learn a lot about, you know, your finances, your legal rights and all of that kind of while all of this was going on. Um, you, you learn all of those things. And I amazingly enough did not think he wouldn't make it but I didn't know how he would make it wow. um so I was very very blessed we were very blessed with the fact that he's walking talking thriving working guy to this day so yeah you are very blessed that is that is unbelievable and you know I think that you could probably help a lot of people with your story because it just goes to show you that miracles do happen and they happen all the time. God works in very mysterious ways. And um, obviously he had other plans for you and your husband. So, yep. I think, I think the same thing. And, you know, it's, it's something I speak on now. I speak to groups and I speak to groups that are mostly females in the audiences because, you know, it's like, these are things that sometimes we let the guy in our life take over the finances, the legal stuff, all of that. And it's, it's like, I thought we had all of our T's crossed and our I's dotted because we had four months to prepare and we didn't. And so my, my goal is always to get out there and speak to groups about being prepared as much as possible so that you don't, you know, you're not, you don't lose a lot of money um, and just have your assets, you know, you need to have your assets protected. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can never really prepare for the loss of a loved one, even when you're prepared. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a friend of mine put out a book called prepared and it's all about the things you need to do before the accident happens before the diagnosis happens and um her name is Cheryl Field and she wrote this book for exactly these reasons mm -hmm. and you know she she likes to try to address you know women who are my age like I'm 39 and um you know in my particular case, I've already lost both my parents years ago, but um, the majority of women are either just getting ready to or around this, this stage. Um, and, and there's so much that you don't know that you need to know. And, and we never know, like, we don't know what we don't know, right? Like until right. you actually experience it and, you know, you just kind of have to figure it out on your own. Um, you really can't be prepared. So I think that's important for you to share your story. You know, even when it's like when we don't want to go to the gym, right? It's like we have to get up and go <laughs> because that's when we need to go the most. So the fact that you you took your your pain and and I'm sure you were absolutely exhausted and you put it into a book that you can share with the whole world, like good for you. That's amazing. Thanks. That's yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, I uh, I always have a, a mentality or a mindset of paying it forward. So it's like, okay, well, I wasn't put in this situation just to learn it for our, ourselves and move on. Why not pay it forward? So Absolutely. that's what I do. I love it. And um, I remember you said something along the lines, you have like a, a quote that you go by. Um, oh, I always 
I always say, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? Yeah, I love that because, oh my goodness, it's so true. If we live in our bodies and mm -hmm. so you're an advocate for health and wellness, obviously. Um, I am. Yeah, I am as well. I, I, I abused my body for a long time with alcohol and food. And, um, you know, it's taken me a lot of years to learn that this is the only body that I have, you know, I don't get another one. So, uh, we have to take care of it. Yeah. Well, good for you. Good for you. I, one of the things I always talk about is what's a, a new health habit that you can create for yourself. And maybe that's no alcohol or significantly reduced alcohol or movement. I'm a, I, I tend to advocate for movement because some people kind of go the extreme and they do, you know, those two hour workouts and stuff. And I'm like, that's not for everyone. No, do something not, that, that makes you move. Yeah. Okay. I, that, that actually works for me because I actually have a 21 day challenge that I run continuously and it's made for real women by a real woman. I'm not a fitness guru, but when I gave birth to my uh, twins four years ago, I was 360 pounds and collectively over the past four years, my husband and I have lost over 300 pounds together. So, um, you know, it's, it's not about those two hour hardcore workouts. It's about making changes and being mindful in your day mm -hmm. and doing it to be healthy and not to be, you know, I don't like the extremism that, you know, we kind of are, are, because I think that's the fastest way to failure. That's, that's my humble opinion. So um, yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'm, I'm about 20 years older than you. And so I come from the lifestyle of do things that your body can continue to do for the rest of your life and not, you know, it's like most people are not going to sustain those one hour or two hour hardcore workouts for the rest of their lives. So I yeah. totally agree with you. It's like, do something that makes you move, get up and yeah. Absolutely. I, even yesterday, it was St. Patrick's day yesterday. I told my clients like, have the corned beef and the cabbage, have a potato, don't eat six <laughs> potatoes, but treat yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so, all right. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Um, just to, that if they want to connect with me, they can go to the, my link tree. That's the best way. Cause I have a variety of different things that I offer They can go to my link tree and it's under Rhonda B as for my, my maiden name B Lampo and Rhonda is spelled with R-H-O-N-D-A. So Rhonda B. Lampo, and they can connect with me there. And um, they can even click on the link there, which will forward them to Amazon if they want to get my book. Okay, perfect. And I will make sure that we have the link posted everybody, um, for everybody that can just click it and uh, get straight to you and to your book. Sounds great. All right, Rhonda, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with us. Thank you, Anissa. I appreciate it. All right. And God bless you and your husband. Thanks.